What's up guys, Rick Denamir back again for another Tech Tip Tuesday. So thank you so much for joining us today. We're gonna talk about one of my favorite ways from the beach to catch a coho salmon is herring under a float. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. We're gonna go through all the riggings here, make this super easy. It's go time right now in the salt water and a great time to hit off the beach for some really big fish. Stick around. We're going to have some fun today. What's up guys? Thanks for coming. So like I said, we are talking herring under a float for coho salmon off the beaches, but this also applies to you guys that fish off the piers too. A lot of these fish travel close to shore as they're running to their river destination. So you can really intercept them a lot of different places. And let me tell you, there's nothing more satisfying than seeing that float bury under the water and a hot fish come flying out. You guys might recall we had a video a couple years back, beach fishing for silvers. And I was fishing a herring under a float. I had my limit under a half hour. And these fish were just as hot as can be. So... I really hope I can share something today for you guys to add something to your beach fishing arsenal and can really make a difference. So let's dive into this and we'll cover the gear that you need, kind of rod selection, and really how easy this is to get set up. So let's get started. And as always guys, just FYI, all the products described today in this episode of our tech tips are going to be in the description below so it can help you guys get set up and ready for your next adventure. All right guys, so since we are float fishing, we need to talk about the terminal end and work to the tackle end. So gear wise, you're using a float rod. And a float rod can mean a lot of different things to some people. So to be specific and keep it simple, I fish a rod bigger in length than nine foot six. Typically a float rod, especially in this situation works best at over 10 feet so if you have a 9 to 10 foot rod you're going to do just fine it helps really to mend the line as you're drifting in the current so what we're talking about with this case I use a nine and a half I believe and even the video that I show here it was a nine and a half um, but you can also use a 10 foot like I said and really do well you pair that up with probably a 3,000 size spinning reel with braid and that's a huge bonus there it's using braid just as you would in the rivers allows the uh, line to float on top of the water and you get more line to your reel capacity it floats you can cast further if you need to and you can also pack a little bit more line on the reel so when you do hook a bigger fish you have the ability to control them so reel wise they were dropping down to braid um, I stick to probably about 30 pound test, either Power Pro or I, you know, Berkeley Fireline Crystal has been a really good one for me. Um, so there's a lot of different ones out there. Pick your favorite, but sticking around that 30 pound test is a great starter point for Coho. Then, after we've got our rod and our gear selection, we start working down the line. Now, for you guys in the salt water, um, I like to go just like my river setup and take my braided line, the main line, and then I take a top shot section. And usually with a top shot, I just run some nice solid Iser line, 15 pound test, make about six to eight foot section of top. You can even go a little bit more. But the reason for that is you have the ability then to use that top section as kind of your buffer. So as you fish the beach, you can raise and drop, and you have some play to get that herring in the right depth. Especially if you're off a pier, having probably a 10-foot top shot section is going to be critical. So next, standard float setup. I use one of the braided bobber stops. Then I use a rubber stop next to that just to make sure we don't get any slippage at all for the float. I then take a bright colored Yakima Bay Corky 
a soft oval bead, and then my photo choice. Here happens to be a 30 gram clear drift, which is basically roughly an ounce, um, ounce and a quarter, so to say. So you can get get away with a little bit bigger float here. Um, you can also use a foam dink style or the slip, but going to the float selection itself, you want to keep it as a slip float. This makes everything way easier to cast, especially if you have six, seven feet of distance to your rig, you want to make sure you can do that easily with casting. So pick your favorite float, and you're going to want to get something that can at least hold an ounce of weight, because you never know how bad the current flow will be. Then after that, we're going to do another one of our rubber beads to an inline float weight. These are nice because they have a swivel built in, helps minimize line twist. I pour my own, but you can find them out there. Bomac makes a bunch. Um, a lot of manufacturers do. Then next is where our meat potatoes come for our actual bait rig. So I take about three feet of 12 pound, uh, this is fluorocarbon, and then I have a 3 aught Gamagatsu Octopus Barbless and about four and a half inches down to a 2 aught Barbless. You can do uh, a mosquito hook off the back end, but these octopus style work very well. And uh, I'll show you why. First off, you have to have Barbos and Puget Sound, but doing it this way allows a perfect setup for your bait itself. I will say the next piece, it comes in handy more often than you'll see um, out there for anything else. This video, you guys saw fishing those live herring paid just itself in gold having this container. It helps keep that herring, whether it's live or dead, pinned to your hook. You get more cast per bait and it really makes a difference to keeping your bait in the water and fishing as opposed to feeding the seagulls because no one likes to do that. So for our herring example today, dug into the tackle box and found a banjo minnow which is pretty much about the size, about four and a half, five inches of what a red label herring will be, which is about the perfect beach fishing for coho size. So I rig my hooks based upon the bait size. So when you line it up, you want to have, if you guys can see this here, that back hook to be hanging in just about tail so as that sits in the water it's going to be perfectly set there so before I get that bait on the hook alright guys so you're going to take your bait button you can pick those up at any local store but you're going to get one of those discs to drop down before you even get to your bait you're going to put one of these on the top hook so I line it up, get it right on the hook there, perfect. Now if this is a live or dead herring, I take the whole herring, I find right up next to the eyeballs, so right right up in here where that black line is on a live herring or dead one you're gonna have a nostril I stick that right through the nostril and out the other side so this hook hangs perfect right through that the next I take the bait button one more time, drop the dispenser down, get another right on there,
and you can see now there's a disc on each side of the nose. So now my leader that I tied for the back hook sits perfect right there in the tail and the top hook sits just like that. You can if you want to you can take that back hook and thread it through this back section of the tail just below the meat and you can pull that right through if you want that hook to stick right out the side you can play around with having a little bit of bend in the bait but really especially with a live herring um, I found if you just let that back hook dangle you will get those short striding fish um, but it's super easy super simple guys you will have a lot of success float fishing herring because those silvers go nuts as they're traveling and finding bait if you fish by rips off the beaches where you see birds busting on bait you'll see those fish too and fishing a live or dead herring presentation just like this under a float you will absolutely do killer um, so one additional piece I want to add that will make your life easier because those double hook rigs can be a pain sometimes to store pick yourself up one of these newer leader feeders and you can rig all of your double hook rigs and frankly because you will run into situations where you lose a fish to a sea lion you possibly break off a fish on a snag you hit something where you lose rigs it's a possibility it happens so I have one of those boxes in my pack I can carry a bunch of leaders and I'm ready to set for an all-day adventure but that's it guys float fishing herring off the beach or a jetty or a pier it's an absolute killer way to do it and one of my favorites for just really cool action line ripping and really fit hot fish so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for joining us today. We'll catch you on the water. It is now coho time to the fullest. We're right in the hot of it. We have more fish coming from the ocean. We have fish into Puget Sound. Our river's got fish. So a lot more stuff's coming our way. And uh, we'll catch you out there. So take care, guys. And fish on.